Hello, my name is Steven Manhout and in my talk I will introduce some topics such as genomic selection, high throughput phenotyping, next generation sequencing, machine learning, all of these technologies that have to be integrated in plant breeding programs and that will increase the rate of genetic progress. So if one is doing research in the field of plant breeding, it is fair to say that one is truly standing on the shoulders of giants. And this is exemplified in this graph of Professor Nielsen of Purdue University, where we can see the US corn yields starting from 1866 until now. And what we see is that from starting until 18 or 1930, we can see that yield levels are approximately constant. So there is no genetic progress. And then from 1930 onwards, by introducing hybrid breeding, a more systematic scientific approach to plant breeding, we see that a steady rate of genetic progress is attained. And this knot in the, in the graph is referred to as the first miracle of plant breeding. Now, around 1950s, this process of hybrid breeding is further optimized and one uses one, uh, two-way hybrids now, hybrids with two parents and this allows us to attain an even greater increase of the genetic potential. This rate of genetic progress has been going on and is being steady until now. So given this steady rate of genetic progress, why would we need a third miracle? Well, we have quite some challenges ahead. For one, by 2050, we'll have 10 billion people on this planet. So we will need 56% more food. Secondly, we're already using 50% of the vegetated land for agriculture, and this surface should not further expand. And thirdly, on the European level, some strong ambitions towards a more sustainable agro-food system have been expressed, with a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by at least 55%, reduction in chemical fertilizer use of 20%, reduction of pesticides by 50%. And all of this while increasing biodiversity, planting 3 billion trees and having at least 25% of the farmland managed as organic farms. Now, given this, these challenges, we are in desperate need of a third miracle. And there are several candidate technologies that are likely to provide this miracle. And one of the first one, the first contestants is obviously gene editing. Gene editing allows to change one or multiple genes at the same time towards, uh, for, the, for the traits of interest and to improve those traits. Now, there are obviously on the European level legislative issues with this technology, but even that, also on the, technology, on the technological level, there are some concerns, especially on part C, where we see editing of quantitative trait loci. That is likely to remain problematic, even with gene editing, as we do not know the genes that are causative for quantitative traits. Second contestant is speed breeding. Now, speed breeding is also a very recent, very innovative technology where the goal is to increase the number of generations that one can produce in a single year or in a single growing season. And one does this by manipulating the environmental conditions, the nutrient solutions, the lightning conditions, the CO2 concentration and so on. All of this to increase the number of crosses and the number of offspring one can create in a single year. And this obviously also increases the rate of genetic progress. Third contestant, and my personal favorite obviously, is predictive breeding. Now, predictive breeding is not a very recent technology as can be seen from the reference here from 1944, where we can see that we have a prediction technique, a prediction method that allows us to predict the performance of offspring of four-way hybrids. Now, given this long history of predictive breeding, it's starting from the 1900s 
where the foundations have been laid out saying that the phenotype is genotype plus environment going on to the 1950s where the mixed model methodology of Henderson has been developed until now we have genome-wide association studies and genomic prediction. So predictive breeding is firmly nested into this timeline of quantitative genetics and in my point of view there are basically two pivotal insights that have changed or dramatically changed even the field of animal and plant breeding. And the first of that insight is breeding value estimation or the use of breeding values instead of per se values. Now, the idea is quite easy to understand. Instead of using the performance records of the parents themselves to decide which is the best parent, we're going to use the performance rec records of their offspring. So the best parent is not decided by who is the best performer, but who has the best performing children. The second pivotal insight is that we can estimate these breeding values directly from the DNA code of the parents. And this concept or this methodology is referred to as genomic prediction or genomic selection. So we no longer have to cross parents, make offspring, test those offspring to estimate their breeding values. We can predict them directly from the DNA code. And to make these prediction models, we need a training set where individuals have been genotyped and phenotyped. We need a prediction model. And this allows us to make predictions for untested parents. We can predict their breeding values. Now again, genomic selection requires additional effort, but allows to increase the rate of genetic progress. Now there are numerous ways of making these genomic prediction models and one of those is machine learning which is used in many branches in many domains and it's somewhat hype sensitive as shown here in the Gartner hype cycle where we can see that there's always with a new technology some anticipation a peak of inflated expectations. People have such high hopes that machine learning will give us accurate predictions of breeding values. And afterwards, after we have a true of delusionment, we see that results are not as good as we expected to end up with a set of methodologies, predictive analytics. And I think this is where the standard model-based and Bayesian approaches for genomic predictions are now. We have a plateau of productivity. Despite the hype sensitivity of machine learning, there are some interesting lessons to learn from other domains. And one of this is that data has unreasonable effectiveness. As shown here, some statements that simple models and a lot of data trump more elaborate models based on less data. And this is basically the main message here is that we need more data, larger training sets, if we want to really use machine learning in genomic prediction models. So if we need more training data, we need more both phenotypes and genotypes. And we need to increase training sets and we need phenotyping and genotyping capacity. Now, if we're looking at high throughput phenotyping technology, there has been quite some uh, developments going from UAVs and uh, near-infrared, LiDAR, there are all sorts of approaches allowing us to phenotype a large number of candidates, therefore increasing the training sets. Obviously, in most of the times, these traits that we're selecting for uh, will not be directly observable, but often by using pro proxy traits or other approaches, we can indirectly select for the key traits by using proxy traits that have been obtained by high, thru high throughput phenotyping. Second component, we also need high throughput genotyping. And again, a lot of techno technological advancement has been made in the field of next generation sequencing. By using this technology and the combination of imputation, which is basically uh, filling in the holes, filling in the blanks, we can have a low cost, high throughput genotyping allowing us again to expand the 
this training set size is allowing us to use machine learning. And ultra low density genotyping by means of amplicon sequencing or skim sequencing is a very active field of research allowing us to obtain exactly these goals. So far I have made a, a claim that predictive breeding is likely the answer or the third miracle that we are looking for. But in fact, it is my conviction that predictive breeding alone will not be sufficient to resolve the problems that lie ahead. And that we actually have to combine multiple technologies such as predictive breeding, but also gene editing and uh, speed breeding to at attain our goals. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, any data sets, any research topic you want to discuss, feel free to reach out to me.